Angel Tears by Rick Tobin Keep them back, Sergeant, the lieutenant ordered his senior noncom. Wailing echoes in eerie waves reverberating against devastated ruins of crumbling ochre mud brick. Muffled cries filled sorrow-soaked rags stuffed over widows' mouths beneath their hijabs. Battlefield mists converged with explosive vapors, covering terrified women dragging their robes across blood-spattered dust and street rubble at edges of a recent massacre. Their eyes burned from freshly decaying flesh reeking of putrescine and cadaverin. Barred surviving family members circled until American soldiers cleared a perimeter. Charred remains lay sprawled across the marketplace. Husbands, children, and grandchildren littered helter-skelter across a destroyed bazaar, shredded by a suicide bomber, with some torsos pressed into indented mortar and brick. Other remains still dripped as splattered fragments against perforated village walls. A lone marine patrol finally waved entry to waiting mourners wailing and flinging their arms skyward. Pull back. Keep an eye for secondary attackers in the crowd. See a target? Take it. The lieutenant pointed his finger down a narrow street opposite the direction of the platoon's withdrawal. A sniper overhead confirmed his readiness. Blood rivulets oozed through street drainage, dribbling into pools where brick and glass blocked shallow causeways. Women threw stones at carrion birds gathering on loved ones' corpses. Muslim law forbids such indignities. White sheets were carefully placed over full bodies, while parts, scattered in disarray, were gathered with dignity in large woven baskets lined with white muslin. At the northern edge of the market's narrow passage, three forms glided toward the grieving crowds through a sudden drifting fog. These strangers wore heavy teal scarves about their heads in modified cyan hijabs, revealing only ebony sun shields wide and close to their faces. They drifted through the scene in comfortable jumpsuits, a forbidden garb for women in Iraq. Their long fingers filled electric blue gloves, shimmering in glints of a sunset, struggling to cut through the battle haze. Target acquired, a marine sniper whispered into his mic while adjusting reticles on his scope. Four mourners pointed to the uninvited strangers and began a warning cry, wagging their tongues and yodeling a haunting high-pitched chorus. As the two groups joined at the carnage edge, the three visitors in cyan robes reached out and gathered the nearest locals in their arms, giving them solace by absorbing their grief. Tears darkened the new arrivals' garments as they purred a low hum vibrating through the Muslim women in their arms, immediately calming them. More villagers circled and pressed in, rotating positions from the center as they caressed and hugged the cyan suits. The light blue uniform soaked up all liquid sorrows, darkening to deep aquamarine with survivor tears. They don't belong here, soldier. Take them out. Do you read? The lieutenant's commands were sharp in the shooter's earpiece. A woman wearing a recent crescent on her job ran from the shadows to the throbbing gathering. She pushed furiously through the crowd as soothed women rocked on their heels, circling, swarming, and humming with the visitors' purring bodies as though a gathering of bees was protecting their hive queen. Who are you? The attacker screamed in Farsi as she pulled at one of the blue headdresses. She pulled a black visor to one side, revealing yellow eyes and long black whiskers. The attacker screamed while falling backward to the ground, unconscious, 
lying paralyzed below the swaying villagers. The feline leader of the three interlopers moved to the center of the surrounding humans. She spoke lowly. Lyrans have gathered up your pain and sorrow following losses from battle since ancient times as honored gifts to our leader, Pasht. She then refitted her eyewear to block pain from the dull sunlight. She continued, Forgive this one below us for her attack and for misunderstanding. We come to you, women of Earth, in your times of greatest loss. We absorb that agony. In return, you grant your tears. Your water of grief has healing compounds we can't reproduce. It is the only cure for a plague on our world. Your tears will save many. Be at peace, beloved. Blessings from our blue star upon you forever. The three strangers drifted back north, floating over the dusty streets, leaving those behind to tend to their dead. But without the burden of deep mourning, and with no memory of their encounters with an alien race. Why didn't you take them out? You disobeyed my order. The angry voice in the headset broke the silent concentration of the rifleman. No, sir. I followed my granny's order. She told me they might show up some day in the battlefield, as they did at the Alamo, Antietam, and Pearl Harbor. They were at the airplane crash in Pennsylvania on 9-11. I was there, too. Nobody shoots angels. Not this Marine. Copy that?